This is Laborz and it is so nice to have you here. These are the paints you need. We start by removing those nasty moil lines. These Hero Quest miniatures are uh, quite rubbery PVC, which has some ups and downs uh, compared to polystyrene. The good part about them is that they hardly ever break if you drop them. The downside is you need to use the sharp part of your plate, otherwise you create crumbles and uh, less even surface. So take care of that when uh, preparing these miniatures. The fun part about this process is that after priming, you will always find new moin lines that you missed at your first attempt. I primed this mini using Vallejo's Mecha Primer Black, but any black primer of your choice would be fine. I don't really like the zenithal approach because we will use these uh, blacks for our darkest shadows. Papa Labors usually starts with the darkest color. So I covered nearly everything with a mix of black and Nagarot Knight. I only miss the inside of the cape and the back of the shield. We just want to give some depth to our shadows with this desaturated purple. My compressor is at 4 PSA and the consistency is 1 part paint, 2 part water. I prefer to use more diluted paint for the airbrush with a relatively gentle trigger control. If you don't have an airbrush, just use thin layers of paint for the same effect. Let's start working on the cape. I start with Word Barrels Red with the same consistency as before and the same air pressure. I made a highlight reference photo that you can download from the Patreon post so you can have a better idea of how I sketch the highlights with this layer. Don't worry about hitting some other parts with the airbrush, overspraying is not a big deal if your paint consistency is thin enough. Then I use a brush to make the highlights more defined. Always use thin layers if you are working on an airbrush surface, so it won't be obvious which part was done by the airbrush and which part was done by the brush. Try a one part paint, one part water consistency and see how visible your brush strokes. If they are too opaque compared to the airbrush layer, then add more water and if they are too transparent, then add a bit more paint. It's all about experimenting what works for you. The next highlight color is Mephiston Red. Cover 60% of our previous layer with this color and continue to use thin layers. This is very important, guys, okay? Thin layers help you with seamless blends. Oh yeah, and one more thing. Take your time with blending or I will slap on your tiny head, okay? We want this clock to be smooth like a Renny's butt chick. So we need a couple of thin layers of glaze. So move your brush in the same direction every time and remove the excess on a paper towel before you apply the paint to the surface. I add some Emperor's Children to the Mephiston Red to push the values. These pinkish highlights I think resonate very well with the game's uh, box art. If you look at the box, it feels like it has a purple filter to it. Or pink. Okay, you know guys, Papa Labors have uh, Deuteronomaly, so I'm just guessing here, but I want to add that filter to our mini. Cover 80% of our previous layer and blend in the colors nicely. See, Papa Labors take his time to dilute the paint and start glazing. Very important, you guys. You don't need 1257 layers of glaze to make smooth transitions. Just three to four coats and make sure your brush strokes always follow the same pattern. Start in the darker area and end the brush stroke in the brighter area. No Mickey Mouse. Let's use pure Emperor's Children. That sounds a bit weird, okay? For the maximum highlights. See how I divided the two highlight areas on the back with the feathers coming out of the helmet. Where the shape starts to turn into an angle that doesn't face up. That's where our shadow is going to be, okay? If something is facing up, then it's probably wise to highlight it. If something is facing down, it's probably even more wise not to highlight it, unless you want a slap on your tiny hand. Okay, now it's time for the NMM, which stands for Non-Metallic Metal. We have a nice scale mail and sword we can paint nicely with this technique. If you could follow along uh, how to paint the cloak, you have no trouble following the upcoming steps either. If you have any trouble, uh, then just let me know in the comment section. And by the way, Papa Labor still has a spot or two for online coaching on uh, Patreon. So don't be shy, you guys, okay? I mix some Nagarot Knight with Demonite Hide. This is our base zone for our meta. Of course, if you don't want to fiddle with the uh, NMM, then you can just use any metallic paint you prefer and slap some wash on it. And then you have the perfect recipe on how to be mediocre.
Of course, if you prefer a true metallic finish, that is perfectly fine, but Papa Laporte believes in you. So try to paint NMM. And who knows, maybe you'll enjoy the process and it will look awesome, okay? You know I love you. Remember guys, how fun it was when we glazed not so long ago. Now it's time to do it again, because the sword and armor won't blend itself. I'd like to use steepling as well to create small dots around areas that are a little bit harder to blend. Reduce the highlight areas with them on that height. You see, our largest highlight areas are around the right side of the character. If we look at it from the front, then it's the left, okay? So we want to have these highlights more focused around the upper body. As you can see, I barely highlighted his right leg. Why? Because it's in a negative angle compared to our light source, which is coming from the left. Okay? Look at the highlight reference photo, so it's more clear that way. So we are going to have a very dark areas, which will create a really high contrast finish. Contrast is very important between values. Contrast to painting is like diabetes medicine to granny. Without it, you can go into a shock. From boredom. That's a real medical thing, by the way. I know what you guys are feeling right now. You feel like you need to highlight everything and can't let those dark areas to exist. But let me tell you a big secret. If you highlight everything, it's the same like you didn't highlight anything at all. Yes, you feel it right. It's almost frightening how wise Papa Laporte is. Okay, let's further reduce the highlight areas with warmth in grey. Thin layers like the cataract on granny's eyes. Not because those things are quite thick, unfortunately. As you can see on the scale mail, I treat it as one continuous surface. Not picking out the scales one by one, okay? That's Mickey Mouse. Okay. Once you sketch this layer, you can paint the edges of the scales around the painted ones. Mix some PSN to the Warfin Grey and continue the process. On the blade of the sword, try to avoid the paint flow into the recesses because it would look a bit uh, messy and I will slap on your tiny hand. On the helmet, try to emphasize the spherical shape with the highlight placement, but if you stayed in the previous layers, your knight should look just as nice. Edge highlight the blades all the way to make it look like a sharp object. This mini has some decent edges, but if uh, your knight is a bit rougher around his blade, then leave this step out because bumpy edge highlights are less attractive looking. Now with pure white, only edge highlight the blade where it faces towards our light source. So basically just the upper half of it. With the armor done, let's cover the furry parts with Gortor Brown. Thin layers of Gortor Brown, guys, okay? We like to have some darker recesses along those hairy collars. The more the shape faces towards our light source, the bigger and more opaque layers we'd like to have, okay? Not chunky out of the pot bits all the way because there will be consequences. A slap on your tiny hand. For the shadowy parts of the fur, I mixed some Nagarot Knight and I applied it where the hairs face down. Same old, same old. Very important that I'm not trying to pick out the hairs one by one. We treat it as a surface. A rough surface, so we don't need silky smooth blends like Granny's Batching, okay? This time it's ok to be a little bit rougher with your blends. To highlight these parts, I mixed in some Kessler Flash. I don't really highlight the fur on the right leg, because there is a huge drop shadow. Cover more of the Gortor Brown layer on the right side of the miniature, so this will create a volumetric feel to the highlights, and with every layer, a light source will be more Defined. Now with pure Kislev flesh, we can pick out some hairs, but since this mini is quite small, use a very pointy brush for this, okay? Since the texture of these uh, furry parts is rough, this layer will blend in on its own, even with a little thicker consistency, but not super thick. Okay guys, Papa Laborts is watching you, no Mickey Mouse here. 
I painted a thin black binding on the cape so we can add uh, that blue part. Just use any black you have and uh, paint a tint stripe along the edge of the cape. Mix some Alliety blue to the Night Lord's blue and cover this black binding leaving just a super tiny thin black line where it connects to the red part. The tiny black line will make this detail so crispy that you need to smell burnt toast if you are doing it right. Also, paint the section around his waist. Highlight it with Alliety Blue and make sure you still keep that thin black line while doing so. The thinner the layer, the less obvious if you make a mistake. But I'm sure you don't make any because Papa Laborte is guiding your tiny hand. On his waist, try to use a thicker consistency to edge highlight the huge blue band. Let's push the contrast with Hoel Blue uh, on the parts that are facing up. Just a thin layer here and there and the cape is uh, now more or less done. More or less because uh, we created this nice highlight on the stripe, but we have a very dark red part next to it. And since the cape is not folding there uh, in a negative angle, it doesn't make much sense. Oh, and Papa Labort forgot to highlight his hand, of course. Uh, which is a more common thing here on the channel than I like to admit, but at least I noticed it now. So let's use all the same colors we used before and uh, highlight these parts. For the smaller leather straps, I used Dumbo Brown, covering 90% of the surface. Then I went back with Chrysler Flash to catch their edges using the side of my brushes tip. If you'd like to see how I did the gold part, you can access to that content on my Patreon page. The link is in the video description. With that, our night is done. If you'd like to see more Hero Quest content, give a like to the video and leave a comment. It really helps out old Papa Laborts. So thank you for joining me on this little painting adventure. A huge thanks to my Patreons who support this kind of videos. With special shout out to Jonathan Rhodes, Cold Bloody Dom, Trying to Paint Minis, Jonathan Mosner, Ruzak, Vlad D, One Shot Joe Crafts, Glitchy Mac Rash, Guillaume Belanger. If you want to support the work of Papa Laborts, you can do that on Patreon, where you will have early access to these videos with some exclusive content. Uh, I started to do PDF guides, and if you need a little bit of extra help, online coaching is also available. I hope the rest of your day will be as smooth as a granny's butt chicken.